first book signing for So Help Me God. I love you bringing up my dad because uh, while much of uh, So Help Me God deals with my public life, my election to Congress in 2000 and the tumultuous years that would follow that, I was on Capitol Hill on 9-11. I write about that in the book. My uh, my, my efforts uh, that would result in me emerging as a conservative leader in the House of Representatives, going home to Indiana and to be governor of the state, and then also having the great privilege uh, to be your vice president during some extraordinary years of accomplishment for the American people. And none of that would have been possible without um, my faith in God, uh, my family, uh, and the support and prayers of the American people. So let me just say from the outset, thank you for the privilege of serving as your vice president. It was the greatest honor of my life. But uh, it's wonderful you brought up my dad. My dad uh, was a, grew up on the south side of Chicago. He was a fast-talking young man enlisted in the army, went into the Korean War, and uh, came back and met my mom, and they followed work down to a small town in southern Indiana where I showed up. But my dad, uh, my dad has been gone uh, since uh, 1988. But sometimes I have to remind myself that our, our three adult children never met my dad because he continues to be such a, such a great influence in my life. He's the best man I ever knew. And uh, some, someone recently observed that he's the secret star of So Help Me God. And that blessed my heart. But that story you referred to says a lot about my dad and the way he raised my three brothers and two sisters and I. In the chapter entitled Climb Your Own Mountain, Dad, Dad had built a successful business in a small town, a gas station business. I actually worked at a gas station to help pay my way through college. I was a gas station attendant. And for the younger people in the room, we'll explain later what that was. <laughs> but my dad was a man of strong faith. His most often repeated phrases were, not my will but thine be done climb your own mountain which was he said to each one of his children he said uh, I don't care what you do with your life but I, I want you to strive every day to do your best and the story you allude to very thoughtfully John was uh, really captured that moment I had uh, I didn't excel greatly in sports in high school uh, but I had a lot of success in speech competitions and I remember coming home from a oratorical contest with a fistful of blue ribbons. And I threw them on the kitchen table to Dad, and I told him I'd had a great day. And the great part about it was is that I really hadn't tried that hard. I mean, I really just kind of phoned it in, if you get my point. <laughs> and Dad looked up at me. I thought he'd be pleased that I, I came back with a fistful of ribbons, and he threw them back at me. And he said, I don't want anything to do with those. And I said, why? What do you mean? I came in first. And he said, no, you just told me you didn't do your best. He said, all I ever want from you is to do your best. And uh, every day of my life, I try and live up to that standard. That, that combat veteran, that uh, dedicated father, dedicated husband. One of the, my favorite memories in the book about my dad was as your vice president, I... One of my first international trips was to travel to Korea. And we were driving through the capital of Seoul. And they had billboards at the bus stations, didn't they? It said, Welcome Vice President Pence. And then right underneath it, it said, And thank you, Lieutenant Ed Pence, for our freedom. Okay, now, uh, one more story I'd like you to tell. I just fell in love with this story when I read it. And this one's about a fraternity brother that you had in college. And uh, 
This is a born again story, but I, I'd like you to tell a story about what he wore around his neck and how that affected you. Well, he's got this fraternity brother named John. I thought it was only appropriate because I thought, my gosh, it's like this, this man's a modern day John the Apostle. But uh, you remarked to him about what he was wearing. Well, when I went off to college, I, uh, I, uh, I had really lost interest in the faith of my youth. I, I gained some notoriety among my peer group, and I, I was probably a typical 18-year-old young man, pretty full of myself. I'd been raised in a church home. My family was church on Sunday, first before dinner, but uh, I lost interest in it. But when I went off to college, as I recounted, so help me God, I started to meet some young men that seemed to have an ease in their life that I didn't have.